dare to enter the twilight zone of the paranormal? At Paranormal M, we delve into the uncharted depths of the supernatural. Don't miss out on our mind-bending stories. Subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay connected. Story number one, my encounter with Robert the Doll. Back in 2017, I was just a 14-year-old when my family and I embarked on an unforgettable vacation to Florida. It was three weeks of pure bliss, filled with pristine beaches, refreshing pools, delectable restaurants, and mouth-watering local cuisine. Little did I know that this trip would etch an indelible mark on my memory, forever seared by a spine-chilling encounter with an infamous doll. During one fateful evening, as I mindlessly browsed through YouTube, I stumbled upon a video by Squeezy, my favorite videographer at the time. In that video, he regaled his audience with the well-known tale of Robert the Doll. Intrigued, I delved deeper into the story. It began at the turn of the last century, when an African maid, employed by the affluent Otto family, bestowed a doll upon their young son, Robert. From the moment Robert laid eyes on the doll, he became inseparable from it. So enamored was he that he even changed his own name to Eugene, solely to christen his doll with its rightful name. However, ominous legends quickly swirled around this seemingly innocent plaything. Whispers permeated the air, insinuating that the maid had dabbled in the dark arts, imbuing the doll with malevolent powers to unleash havoc upon the Otto family. Some claimed that guests who had visited the auto residence fled in terror, swearing that the doll had attempted to strangle them. Eugene's parents made the chilling discovery of bruises and burn marks on their son's body, seemingly inflicted by an unseen force. Moreover, young Eugene's playtime conversation with Robert took an eerie turn, as his voice would seamlessly alternate between his own childish tone and a guttural otherworldly growl that echoed with diabolical resonance. The Robert doll had instilled fear in the hearts of the entire neighborhood, its presence nothing short of bone-chilling. Skipping over the more terrifying details that set the stage for my own personal encounter, I'll fast forward to the moment that solidified my determination. As the squeezy video reached its conclusion, he revealed that the Robert doll could now be witnessed firsthand in a museum located in Key West, Florida, within the Art and Historical Museum. Astounded by this revelation, I wasted no time verifying its authenticity. To my astonishment, it turned out to be true. With my heart racing, I immediately sought out my parents and excitedly implored them to alter our itinerary, so that way we could take a detour on our way back to France. After some deliberation, it was decided I would have the extraordinary opportunity to meet Robert the Doll on the final full day of our trip. Key West, the southernmost city in the United States, lay at the end of a highway flanked by a vast expanse of ocean. It was an isolated paradise surrounded by natural beauty. However, the isolation lent itself to an incredibly potent local folklore, with Robert serving as a central figure. To justify any misdeeds or mishaps, children in the area would casually utter the phrase, Robert did it. And so, the much-anticipated day arrived, and my family and I embarked on our journey to the museum. As we approached the museum, an eerie aura seemed to shroud the premises. The once majestic fort now stood dilapidated and weathered, its walls eroded by time, wind, and the relentless sea. Seagulls scoured the desolate parking lot, feasting on the remnants of their fallen brethren. Undeterred, we entered, only to be greeted by a middle-aged, red-headed woman behind the reception desk. Recognizing her as the most knowledgeable source regarding the museum's exhibits, we engaged her in conversation, primarily seeking information about the elusive Robert. Little did we know that interacting with Robert came with certain peculiar rules. To take a photograph of the doll one must pose a question and wait for his response. With a glimmering reflection in his coal-black eyes signifying a positive answer. The woman cautioned us about the numerous instances of disrespect shown to the doll, recounting tales of people who had resorted to sending letters of apology to Robert at the museum, hoping to quell his mischievous ways. 
She even recounted a chilling incident involving a man who had brazenly struck Robert's glass enclosure, only to meet his untimely demise later that very day in a tragic road accident. With a tinge of trepidation, I mustered the courage to ask the woman if I could pose my question to Robert in French, a foreign language. A world-first endeavor. Her response sent shivers down my spine. Give it a try, and you may become the very first to do so. With bated breath, my family and I embarked on a museum tour. Each corner we explored filled us with a sense of wonder and enchantment. We scoured the fort's labyrinth passageways, passing ancient cannons, military costumes, and rusty remnants of weaponry. And then, as we made a sharp turn down a dimly lit hallway, there he sat, Robert, the sanitarian doll, notorious for allegedly being the harbinger of inexplicable deaths in Key West. He stood tall, confined within a glass enclosure, resting upon a chair. Behind him, a plethora of apology letters from countless countries adorned the walls. Mexico, Germany, Qatar, all beseeching Robert to lift their curses that they believed he had cast upon them. The letters penned in English bore witness to the unspoken rule of politeness when dealing with the enigmatic doll. Summoning all my courage, I locked eyes with Robert and uttered in my native tongue, Bonjour Robert, je suis de France, et je serai ravi de te prendre en photo. Est-ce que je peux? In that moment, I became the embodiment of audacity, capturing a photograph of Robert, a testament to my bravery, or perhaps my recklessness. Eager to flaunt my feet, I promptly shared the picture with all of my friends via Snapchat, proudly asserting my status as the most fearless child of my generation. With the encounter concluded, we hastily concluded our museum visit and began our journey back to the hotel. The following day marked our departure, a day filled with a flurry of activity as we rushed to gather our belongings, squeezing in last-minute meals before heading to Miami for our flight back to France. Sensing the urgency, we stopped at a Wendy's fast-food restaurant, renowned for its breakfast offerings. Settling into our seats, we placed our orders, eagerly awaiting the sustenance that would fuel our journey. As we indulged in our meals, oblivious to the impending turn of events, little did we know that fate had a haunting surprise in store. After savoring our breakfast, we made our way back to the car, only to be greeted by a scene of absolute devastation. To our shock and disbelief, every window of our vehicle had been shattered, save for the front windshield. Glass fragments littered both the interior and the exterior of the car, a testament to the sudden and inexplicable destruction that had befallen us. The puzzling aspect was that our suitcase remained untouched, undisturbed in their designated spots, and my headphones lay exactly where I had left them on the back seat. It was as if the windows had spontaneously exploded from within, defying all rational explanation. And amidst the chaos, a haunting thought gnawed at our minds. Did Robert have a hand in this bewildering occurrence? We realized that we hadn't fallen victim to a theft or a carjacking. The shattered windows stood as the only testament to the unexplained phenomenon that had unfolded before our very eyes. The doll's presence in our lives had left an indelible mark, one that defied reason and challenged our perceptions of the world. As we embarked on our journey back to France, a lingering sense of unease accompanied us, forever linking our Florida vacation to the enigmatic Robert the Doll, an encounter that still sends shivers down my spine to this day. Story number two. My first paranormal experience via mobile phone. It was the year 2008, and I was a mere 13 years old at the time. Life seemed so simple back then, filled with the innocence and wonder of youth. I had a peculiar female friend, who I'll refer to as Suzanne, who had a knack for the unconventional. While she possessed a genuinely kind heart, her idiosyncrasies were hard to ignore. One peculiar habit that she had involved, lighting two candles in front of the mirror in her bathroom, 
claiming that it helped her just chill there, as she put it. Initially, her eccentricities didn't bother me much. After all, I only knew about them through our casual conversations on MSN Messenger. However, everything changed on that fateful day when Suzanne called me and expressed her desire to meet up. Little did I know that this would be the start of a perplexing and eerie experience that would haunt my memories for years to come. Exactly one minute into our conversation, my phone started malfunctioning. The screen froze and I could no longer hear Suzanne's voice, or any sound for that matter. I desperately tried restarting it, hoping it would resolve the issue, but my attempts were in vain. In a last-ditch effort, I called Suzanne back, anxiously asking, Suzanne, can you hear me? To my utter bewilderment, instead of a response, I was greeted with the sound of heavy, labored breathing, reminiscent of something suffering from a severe respiratory ailment. Baffled and slightly irritated, I exclaimed, Suzanne, stop messing with me. This isn't funny at all. However, my plea fell on deaf ears, or rather it was met with a spine-chilling, scratching noise, as if someone were forcefully dragging their nails across a chalkboard. The unpleasant sound sent shivers down my spine, adding to the already unsettling situation. Then, as if to intensify the chilling atmosphere, a scream pierced through the silence. It wasn't a scream of fear or terror, but rather one of aggression, as if an unseen entity was launching in a charged attack directed towards me. Fear consumed me and my heart raced uncontrollably, unable to comprehend the inexplicable events unfolding before me. Just as suddenly as strange occurrences had begun, the frozen encounter on the phone miraculously continued counting. I could hear Suzanne's voice again, now tinged with shock and confusion. What the hell was that? Do you think this is some kind of sick joke? She demanded, her voice trembling with a mixture of fear and frustration. Suzanne vehemently denied any involvement throughout the entire ordeal, insisting that she, too, had been a helpless witness to the supernatural phenomenon. She even claimed to have been in front of the mirror, as usual while we conversed on the phone. Terrified and unsure of how to proceed, I confided in my mother, seeking solace and guidance. She urged me to seek protection from the church, advising me to kneel in front of the altar and offer my prayers to God. Pleading for safeguarding against this mysterious entity... Strangely enough, I never followed her advice, hesitating for reasons I couldn't quite understand. Years have passed since that unnerving incident, and my life has taken me to another country. Suzanne and I lost contact soon after that fateful day, as we gradually stopped communicating altogether. Time passed, and as I grew older, my fascination with the paranormal only intensified. I found myself drawn to the enigmatic world of the supernatural, though I never wished to be personally entangled in such experiences. Curiosity eventually got the better of me, and after six long years, I decided to reconnect with Suzanne. I wanted to know how she was doing, and more importantly, whether she had any new insights into the haunting episode from our past. To my surprise, Suzanne remained adamant that she had not been responsible for the eerie noises, in fact, she insisted that it was I who had been playing a cruel prank on her, pretending to be tormented by an unknown force. Though Suzanne's perspective differed from mine, the memory of that inexplicable encounter has left an indelible mark on my psyche. It serves as a constant reminder of the fragility of our understanding of the world and the existence of forces beyond our comprehension. Perhaps one day, as I delve deeper into the realm of the paranormal, I will uncover the truth behind that chilling phone call and the haunting presence that enveloped us that day. Until then, the mysteries of that long-ago summer will remain suspended in the realm of the unknown. Story number three. My 200-plus-year-old pub is 100% haunted. I'm currently living in a quaint 200-year-old pub located in the heart of United Kingdom, 
The pub holds a rich history and it's brimming with stories and secrets that have accumulated over the years. Recently, my partner and I embarked on an ambitious project to convert this charming establishment into six separate apartments and a stunning four-story house. Little did we know that our endeavor would stir up some unsettling occurrences and uncover a haunting past that has left an indelible mark on the premises. As we delved deeper into the renovation process, we stumbled upon some genuinely eerie footage and a photograph capturing a full-bodied apparition these spine-chilling pieces of evidence seemed to validate the strange happenings we had been experiencing since the inception of our project. In an effort to comprehend these phenomena, I decided to conduct some research into the history of the pub. What I discovered sent shivers down my spine. It was revealed that a young boy tragically lost his life just outside the pub in the early 1800s, while an older man met his demise in the start of the 1900s. The pub itself was constructed in 1822 and served as both a boarding house and a bustling pub. Initially, it catered to the needs of canal workers, offering them a place to rest and rejuvenate during their arduous commutes. Additionally, a local historian divulged that the upper floor, or rather upper two floors of the establishment, had gained a notoriety as a prominent brothel during the Victorian era. The hidden secrets of this place were gradually coming to light. To further intensify the enigma, the previous landlord who sold us the property made a startling discovery. Concealed behind a bricked-up wall on the roadside of the pub, nestled between the second and first floors, was a minuscule room. This tiny chamber, which remains unnerving even after being plastered over, was positioned just off a bend in the stairs. The landlord stumbled upon it when he first moved here in the 1970s. Inside the room, he found a box filled with aged newspaper clippings, providing further intrigue to the pub's mysterious history. The landlord's account corroborated my suspicions of the presence of an older male spirit and a younger female entity. However, the notion of children lingering in the spirit realm remained unsubstantiated, as I had never heard nor witnessed any evidence of their presence. Yet, the unexplainable movements of our keys, seemingly dropping from the ground floor, in the kitchen to the first floor landing left me pondering their potential involvement. Within the confines of our home, we encountered an array of paranormal activities on a regular basis. Objects inexplicably shifted positions, disembodied voices permeated the air, and hushed conversations could be faintly discerned, like murmurs just outside a closed door. It was as if we were perpetually caught in a ghostly realm, where the lines between our own existence and the supernatural became blurred. My partner and I would frequently find ourselves wandering aimlessly throughout the house, believing that the other was engaging in a conversation with either ourselves or an unseen presence. Doors would slam shut and windows would mysteriously fling open, mostly during the late hours of the night, amplifying the eerie ambiance. The kitchen door in particular would creak and mimic the sounds of people entering and exiting, an occurrence that I personally attributed to residual energy lingering within the space. However, the most distressing encounter occurred within the realm of my dreams. Over the past year, I've been plagued by vivid, horrific nightmares that unfailingly culminate in me hurling myself from the window of the topmost bedroom. The dream remains constant, yet each time I experience it, different fragments become more pronounced in my memory. The sheer terror that envelops me in these nocturnal visions is indescribable. Moreover, a spectral lady has made recurring appearances in both my waking life and my dreams. Draped entirely in black garments, she wears a hat atop her head and dons a long corseted dress with layers of black petticoats. The corset is embellished with purple ribbons, while her hair is swept to one side and partially obscured by a delicate netting veil. Whenever I encounter her, I am overwhelmed by a profound sense of sadness and a haunting feeling of being lost. Her ethereal presence materializes at the base of the staircase leading to the bedrooms, an area that coincidentally serves as the focal point for the mysterious key movements. She proceeds to ascend the stairs, and as I trail behind her, my gaze fixed on her figure 
she reaches the summit of the staircase. It is at this point that my gaze shifts toward a small loft hatch situated at the top, a space that I've never dared to explore. In a heart-wrenching climax to this recurring sequence, I witness the lady suspend herself from the very loft hatch, her lifeless form swaying eerily in the darkness. Adding to the manifold spectral encounters, I felt a distinct presence while standing in the kitchen on the ground floor. On several occasions, I sensed the weight of a man behind me, as if his very essence pressed against the floorboards. I could feel his breath upon my neck and hear him utter words in a hushed tone, causing me to spin around in anticipation, only to find no one there. The sensation was so vivid that I would even mistake it for the physical presence of my boyfriend, often turning abruptly convinced that he had silently been approaching me. Furthermore, this enigmatic figure would occasionally communicate with me as I teetered on the precipice between sleep and wakefulness. I distinctly recall the moments when he would call out my name or gently admonish me to go to sleep now. These inexplicable occurrences left me both bewildered and unnerved. Seeking answers and solace, I decided to enlist the services of a medium who conducted a thorough walkthrough of our residence. To my surprise, she attested the presence of an elderly male spirit, whom she described as being protective in nature. Moreover, she detected that lingering spirits of two children, a boy and a girl, were present. However, at that particular juncture, the medium failed to acknowledge the presence of the lady who had haunted my dreams and manifested her ethereal form within the house. Prior to this encounter, I'd experienced a peculiar incident in the kitchen where an uncanny sensation of being observed washed over me, and it felt undeniably linked to the lady from my dreams. It's challenging to articulate, but the palpable difference between the masculine and feminine energies was unmistakable. In a bold act, I addressed the presence out loud, urging her to find peace and move on from this earthly plane. In response, a resounding thought echoed within my mind, stating, I don't deserve peace. Determined to offer reassurance, I verbalized that everyone deserves peace, and implored her to follow the light of the candle I had lit specifically for her. Throughout the night, the candle flickered with a gentle glow, symbolizing a beacon of hope for her spirit. Before retiring to bed, I extinguished the candle, bidding her farewell. Since that fateful night, though, her presence has receded. Though the male spirit and an indiscernible force still lingers within the confines of her home, I struggle to articulate the nature of this mysterious presence as it feels distinct from the protective male energy I've previously encountered. In my quest to share the inexplicable encounters and provide a glimpse into the haunted history of our pub-turned-residence, I've attached two photographs taken in rapid succession using my iPhone camera. The pictures were captured in the blink of an eye, and upon closer examination, one can discern an anomaly in the top corner of the window. It serves as a visual testament to the otherworldly occurrences that have permeated our lives, and serves as a reminder that we are mere mortals existing alongside spectral inhabitants. As we continue with the conversation of this historical establishment, we are acutely aware that our actions have disrupted the tranquility of the spirits that once roamed undisturbed. While we strive to create a beautiful abode from the remnants of the past, we remain cognizant of the phantoms that coexist within its walls. Our lives have been forever altered by the ethereal presence that manifests in whispers and apparitions, a constant reminder that the past is not easily relegated to mere history books. Story number four. A demon is sucking energy from my spine while I sleep, no joke. Let me tell you about the terrifying experience I've been enduring for quite some time now. Many people refer to it as sleep paralysis, but I can assure you, it is so much more than that. You see, there exists a creature in my nightmares, resembling a dementor, or a malevolent demon, but its form is rather amorphous and indescribable. Initially, this entity merely haunted me during my sleep paralysis episodes, but lately, 
its actions have taken a much more sinister turn. It appears as though the creature is intentionally trying to evade my gaze, as if it no longer desires to be seen in the same way that it did before. However, despite its efforts to conceal itself, its true intentions are unmistakable. It relentlessly endeavors to extract energy from the back of my neck, specifically from my spine. Strangely enough, it does not employ its mouth for this task. Instead, it extends its hand toward me, resembling the manner to which people perform Reiki. The moment its hand makes contact, an eerie electric sensation surges through my spine, creating a peculiar vibration suction that lasts for a few seconds before abruptly jolting me awake. Each time I wake from this nightmarish encounter, I'm left feeling completely drained and overwhelmingly fatigued. It's truly disheartening. However, I've discovered a peculiar defense mechanism against this vile creature. By sleeping on my back, I effectively deny it access to my vulnerable spine, though it still manages to manifest itself and make feedable attempts to draw energy from other parts of my body, the impact is significantly reduced. Unfortunately, sleeping on my stomach is out of the question, as it almost guarantees the creature's appearance and assault. As for sleeping on my side, I've resorted to propping a multitude of blankets behind my neck as a makeshift barrier. While this method is partially effective, there are occasions when the creature manages to circumvent my defenses. It possesses the ability to pass through physical objects, but curiously, it seems incapable of seeing through them. So even if I sleep on my back and the creature can permeate my bed, it cannot harm me directly because it lacks precise knowledge of the exact location of my spine. At least, that's the interpretation I've developed over time. Having endured this ordeal for several years now, I have accumulated a considerable amount of knowledge about this demonic entity. It visits me approximately once a week, though sometimes its appearance becomes more frequent. I have attempted various remedies, including reciting prayers, which did provide temporary relief, granting me a brief respite from its torment. Alas, the creature returned, undeterred as if it held a personal vendetta against me. The perpetual battle against this malevolent force has left me exhausted, both physically and mentally. The fear that accompanies its visits is indescribable, and the toll it takes on my well-being is immeasurable. I can only hope that one day I will find a permanent solution to rid myself of this haunting presence and finally restore tranquility to my nights. Until then I remain vigilant, clinging to whatever semblance of protection I can gather in the face of this otherworldly adversary. Story number five. It really wanted attention. Moving into a new house in a typical Australian suburb with my two kids, who were about seven and eight at the time, was an exciting but nerve-wracking experience. The brick house boasted a big yard with a beautiful bushland in the back and a massive water reservoir right behind it. The neighbor seemed lovely, always up for a chat, and I soon discovered that the previous occupants had mysteriously moved out in the middle of the night. At first, strange occurrences were minor and easily dismissible. It was the kind of thing where you think that you see something out of the corner of your eye, or a light turns on or off without any recollection of having touched the switch. But then my daughter began coming to me visibly shaken, asking why I'd called her name when I hadn't. She even claimed to have seen an old man with funny eyes in her room, which terrified her to the core. My son, who is on the autism spectrum, adamantly refused to step foot into the spare room, not even to retrieve his beloved iPad, which was his most prized possession. He would stand resolutely at the threshold, unwilling to cross that invisible barrier. As time went on, the paranormal activity escalated, sending chills down my spine. Appliances would inexplicably turn on by themselves, like the kettle or the TV, while lights would flicker on and off right before my eyes. The most perplexing part was that our garage door, an old-fashioned manually operated roller door, would often open on its own 
as if manipulated by an unseen force. Occasionally, I would hear heavy breathing, seemingly originating from right behind me, even though there was no one there. Our dog, usually a faithful and fearless companion, would growl and bark incessantly at something inside the house, but would refuse to enter. It was as if he sensed a presence that we couldn't perceive. On the nights when the children stayed with their father, I would retreat to my bedroom and close the door, seeking solace and safety. Yet despite my best efforts to shield myself from this unexplained phenomena, I would hear knocking on the door. Deep down, I knew better than to open it, fully aware of the malevolent forces lurking beyond. When the kids were back home, I would occasionally hear distant voices and the sound of footsteps on the carpet, prompting me to switch on my bedside lamp, believing it was one of my children in need of comfort. But to my astonishment, no one would be there. Alarmed, I would rush to check on my little ones, only to find them peacefully asleep, completely oblivious to the eerie occurrences that plagued our home. Returning to bed, I would hear the phantom footsteps once more, accompanied by an overwhelming sensation of a presence so close as if an unseen entity's face was about to touch mine. Fearful but determined, I resisted the impulse to open my eyes, hoping that by ignoring it, the presence would eventually dissipate. However, there came a point when two terrifying incidents transpired, prompting me to make the difficult decision to abandon the house, despite the financial losses it entailed. One night while reclining in bed, engrossed in watching television, I suddenly caught sight of a shadowy figure moving about my room. It was no ordinary shadow. It had a distinct human form and made no attempt to conceal itself. With deliberate movements... It traversed from one side of the room to the other, almost as if it wanted to assert its presence, to make its existence undeniably known to me. If that weren't enough to unsettle me, a chilling encounter with a grotesque creature sealed the deal. While passing by a glass sliding door, I noticed my usual brave and alert dog frozen in a rigid haunting stance. His gaze fixed upon a single spot, Intrigued and concerned, I followed his line of sight, and he was immediately overcome by a wave of sickness and terror, rendering me immobile. Perched atop a chair was the largest black bird I'd ever laid eyes upon. It stood nearly a meter tall, and possessed an astonishing girth that far surpassed the size of my 42-kilogram dog. Its jet-black feathers seemed to absorb the surrounding light, and three massive talons protruded menacingly from its powerful feet. Initially, the bird appeared to be resting, its head tucked in like a roosting pigeon. However, when it swiveled to face me directly, I was met with a bone-chilling realization. The creature lacked a head altogether. It was not a result of a decapitation, rather it had been created without a head. Despite this grotesque anomaly, the bird seemed fully aware of its surroundings, fixating its non-existent gaze directly upon me. With an eerie hop onto the ground proceeded to take two more calculated leaps before soaring into the top of my six-foot fence, disappearing into the night. It was an otherworldly display of supernatural power, for the bird didn't walk, but hopped effortlessly, defying the laws of nature. To reach the pinnacle of the fence, it didn't flap its wings, it merely propelled itself from a stationary position, as if it were defying gravity itself. These unnerving experiences were the last straw for me and my family. We wasted no time in vacating the haunted house, leaving behind the unresolved mysteries and paranormal terrors that plagued our existence. Thankfully, since our departure, we've encountered no further brushes with the paranormal, offering us a much-needed respite from the chilling specters of our past. It now makes perfect sense why the previous residents had abruptly abandoned their home in the dead of night fleeing from an unseen realm that had encroached upon their lives. I saw myself driving while driving. Every Sunday for as long as my memory serves me, a family tradition has been in place, a lunch gathering at my grandparents' house. In the past, my aunt used to accompany me, but since I obtained my driver's license a mere three weeks ago, 
I have taken it upon myself to navigate the familiar route. To achieve this, I've been utilizing my grandfather's old car, which holds a certain sentimental value for me. Their residence lies approximately 30 minutes away from my own home, situated in a somewhat secluded area that makes the journey there quite distinctive. Typically, there are minimal vehicles encountered along the way, primarily occupied by individuals who reside in the vicinity. Today was no exception as I embarked on my solitary expedition towards my grandparents' abode amidst the gentle rainfall. The day after Christmas, the streets were noticeably devoid of the usual traffic. However, as I made my way along the road, something peculiar caught my attention. A car traveling in the opposite direction. Initially, I paid it little heed, but due to the solitude of my journey and my heightened caution as a newly licensed driver, I couldn't resist casting a glance in its direction to ensure everything was in order. What I saw next was nothing short of astounding. Almost beyond belief, the vehicle approaching me was an exact replica of my own car, an unremarkable model that could commonly be spotted on the roads. While this occurrence in and of itself may not have been overly alarming, it was the driver that compelled me to react with sheer disbelief. To my astonishment, I found myself sharing an unmistakable reflection of myself. Yes, you read that correctly. The person behind the wheel of the identical car bore an uncanny resemblance to me, so much so that I could have mistaken them for my own mirrored image. The realization hit me like a ton of bricks, sending shivers coursing through my entire being. In fact, I was so profoundly shaken by this extraordinary encounter that I was compelled to halt the car a short distance down the road, unable to process the sheer magnitude of what I had just witnessed. My mind was thrown into disarray, and I struggled to comprehend the unfathomable sight that had unfolded before my eyes. Could it be possible that I had stumbled upon my doppelganger? The notion seemed utterly surreal, but the emotions that enveloped me were anything but ordinary. It was as if the very fabric of reality had been momentarily unraveled, leaving me suspended in a state of profound bewilderment. To say it was an eerie experience would be an understatement. The uncanny familiarity of the scene had left an indelible mark on my psyche. It defied logical explanation, and I found myself grappling with an assortment of perplexing questions. Was this a mere coincidence, or did it signify something more profound? Could it be a harbinger of some inexplicable cosmic phenomenon that lay beyond the realm of human comprehension? My thoughts spun in a maelstrom of uncertainty, seeking elusive answers that seemed to dissipate like mist with each passing moment. The encounter had ignited an unquenchable curiosity within me, driving me to explore the depths of this perplexing occurrence. Yet, for all my introspection and contemplation, the experience remained firmly entrenched within the realm of the bizarre, a peculiar episode that defied simple explanation. As I continued my journey toward my grandparents' house, my mind continued to dwell on the surreal encounter. The rain beat relentlessly against the windshield, seemingly echoing the tumultuous storm of thoughts raging within me. Doubts and speculations swirled through my consciousness, leaving no corner of my mind untouched. Could this other me be an apparition, a specter from a parallel dimension, momentarily crossing the boundaries that separate our worlds? Or was it merely an elaborate prank, an improbable coincidence orchestrated by the whims of fate? The questions piled up, each leading to a labyrinth of possibilities and improbable scenarios. Arriving at my grandparents' house, I found myself in a haze of contemplation. The warm embrace of my family enveloped me, momentarily providing solace and a temporary respite from the enigmatic enigma that had consumed my thoughts. I shared my surreal encounter with them, hoping that their collective wisdom might shed some light on this confounding mystery. However, their reactions ranged from bemusement to disbelief leaving me with a sense of isolation in my quest for understanding. Days turned into weeks, and the memory of that inexplicable encounter continued to haunt me. I scoured the depths of the internet, delving into forums and discussions, searching for others who might have experienced similar phenomena. Yet my efforts were met with little success, 
The notion of encountering one's doppelganger remained shrouded in uncertainty and intrigue, an elusive phenomenon that defied easy explanation. Ultimately, I was left with the realization that some mysteries may never be solved, and some experiences may forever remain enigmatic. Life, it seemed, was filled with inexplicable moments that defied the confines of reason and logic. The encounter with my doppelganger had become a vivid reminder of the vast unknowns that lay beyond the veil of our everyday existence. A reminder that, despite our best efforts, there are some secrets that may forever remain locked within the enigmatic depths of the universe. Story number seven. I saw my camp's historic ghost. In the year 2011, an extraordinary incident unfolded during my adventurous summer at the age of 19. At the time, I was staying with a group of friends, eagerly awaiting our summer job at a Boy Scout camp nestled in the picturesque landscape of New York. It was a well-known rumor circulating among the campers that a particular campsite held a haunted reputation, attributed to the ashes of an individual scattered there long ago. As a fervent enthusiast of the paranormal realm, the allure of this ghostly tale beckoned me and my companions, igniting our curiosity to explore the mysterious happenings. One moonlit night amidst whispers of excitement, my friends and I hatched a plan to venture down to the haunted campsite at the stroke of midnight, eager to witness the specters for ourselves. We stealthily crept through the camp, our hearts pounding with anticipation, until we found ourselves in the eerie silence of the dining hall. Faint noises reached our ears, teasing our senses with hints of something supernatural. However, nothing too extraordinary occurred within those walls, compelling us to press on toward our ultimate destination. Finally, we arrived at the fabled campsite, where the weight of the legends hung thick in the air. Nestled upon a fallen tree, we settled ourselves, enveloped by tranquility of the night. Engrossed in quiet conversation, my gaze absent-mindedly wandered upward. And that's when I saw her. The ethereal figure of a woman materialized before my eyes, vivid and tangible. The sheer clarity with which I perceived her features left me momentarily stunned. She stood there resplendent in a white dress reminiscent of 19th century women's fashion, an embodiment of the past blending seamlessly with the present. An electric surge coursed through my veins, a potent mixture of adrenaline and excitement. As an avid aficionado of the paranormal, this was an experience that surpassed any expectation I held. Strangely, I felt an inexplicable sense of peace and comfort in her presence, devoid of any fear. Driven by an indomitable curiosity, I rose from my perch on the befallen tree, taking tentative steps towards her, allowing the distance between us to diminish to a mere ten yards. My friends, meanwhile, chose to remain rooted to their spot, preserving a safe distance from the ethereal encounter. The apparition, adorned with a gentle smile, reciprocated my calm disposition. I found my voice, uttering soft words of reassurance, emphasizing our sincere intentions to simply observe and pay our respects. Her smile, filled with warmth and understanding, remained fixed upon her delicate features. As if enacting an enigmatic dance, she gracefully moved behind a tree, vanishing from sight, forever lost to my eager eyes. According to the tales that had been passed down, spirits rarely unveiled themselves to mortal eyes unless they felt secure and protected. Armed with this knowledge regardless of its veracity, I couldn't help but feel an overwhelming sense of honor that she chose to reveal herself to us. However, upon sharing this remarkable encounter with my mother, a devout Christian who perceives all paranormal phenomena as manifestations of demonic entities, her interpretation varied greatly from my own. My mother adamantly proclaimed that the ethereal visitor I had encountered was, in fact, a malevolent force masquerading as an innocent spirit. Rooted in her unwavering religious beliefs, she interpreted the incident through the lens of her Christian faith. Despite her insistence, I remained steadfast in my conviction, resolute in the absence of any menacing intentions or ominous aura emanating from the specter. 
The connection I felt with the apparition was one of serenity and acceptance, leaving me firmly convinced that I had stumbled upon a genuine spiritual encounter, untainted by malevolence. In the annals of my life's adventures, this enchanting episode continues to hold a place of honor, a captivating tale of our midnight escapade, interwoven with the supernatural fabric of the unknown. The memory of that night, etched indelibly upon my consciousness, serves as a constant reminder of the intricacies and mysteries that permeate our world, beckoning us to explore beyond the boundaries of conventional understanding. Story number eight. I think my apartment is haunted, and I don't know how I should feel about it. Last September, I embarked on a life-altering adventure when I moved into an ancient mansion nestled within the timeless streets of a small historic city in France. The moment I set foot inside, my heart skipped a beat as I was immediately captivated by the mesmerizing beauty of the ceiling moldings and the majestic marble fireplaces that adorned the grandiose rooms. The mansion exuded an undeniable aura of antiquity, effortlessly transported me back in time with its weathered wooden floors and ceilings that whispered tales of centuries past. The aesthetics of this place, I must confess, ignited a deep-seated passion within me. Rumors had it that the mansion was constructed during the illustrious 1800s, a time when opulence and extravagance were the calling cards of the elite. I, fortunate enough to secure residence on this coveted first floor, basked in the glory of soaring ceilings that had once played host to a bourgeois as they entertained their esteemed guest. However, a second floor above me lay abandoned, shrouded in an eerie silence, while below me lay the remains of the mansion's ancient kitchens, now transformed into dusty and desolate storage rooms. The unsettling ambiance that clung to these lower realms sent shivers down my spine, Despite my initial infatuation with the mansion, there is one aspect that unsettled me. An enigmatic locked door situated beside my bed's headboard. This door, I later discovered, concealed a secret passageway used by the mansion's diligent servants to access their humble abodes hidden beneath the attic. Its presence caused a mild discomfort yet little did I know that it was merely a prelude to a series of peculiar occurrences that would gradually unveil themselves. The saga began with a curious event involving light bulbs. It seemed that within the month of my arrival, I had to replace not one, but two, but a baffling four light bulbs. Initially, I dismissed this as a mere coincidence, for it's not uncommon for bulbs to wear out over time. However, as the lights would flicker and extinguish themselves without warning, never to shine again, a nagging sense of unease wormed its way into my consciousness. Then, a disconcerting symphony of sound emerged from the depths of my room's walls. Night after night, between the witching hours of midnight and four in the morning, I would bear witness to a rough banging, emanating from the very essence of the walls that enveloped me. At first, I attributed this disturbance to the shifting pipes due to temperature fluctuations, attempting to rationalize the inexplicable. Alas, after scouring YouTube in search of similar auditory phenomena, I discovered that the noises I experienced were unlike anything others had encountered. The banging persisted even after the heaters had been silenced, defying any logical explanation. And here's the truly unnerving part. It would cease when I commanded it to stop, as if the unseen force behind this nocturnal commotion could hear and comprehend my words. As if the chilling sounds weren't enough, the temperature within my abode plummeted to unbearable extremes. A coldness so potent and pervasive would seep into every nook and cranny, defying my valiant efforts to warm the apartment. Despite the exorbitant sums of money I poured into gas payments, hoping to stave off the chill, Icy tendrils persisted in haunting the very air I breathed. It was as if certain corners of my living space were enveloped in a supernatural winter, taunting me with their frost-bitten presence. 
However, the most haunting encounters manifested in the form of ghostly lullabies and whispered secrets. Often as I lay in bed or prepared for slumber within the confines of my bathroom, an ethereal melody would permeate the walls, carrying with it the gentle hum of a woman's voice. It was a soothing tune reminiscent of someone tending to a baby, and its haunting melody echoed through the stillness of the night. I know not whether my sanity was at stake, for even my loyal feline companion, who shadowed my every step, would abruptly halt and fixate upon the source of this otherworldly harmony. Yet, perplexingly, my investigations unveiled the absence of any neighboring apartment adjacent to the wall where the enigmatic murmurs seemed to arise. How could such a presence exist where no physical manifestation could be found? Today marked the culmination of these eerie events, solidifying my suspicions and sending tremors of trepidation coursing through my veins. As I observed my feline companion's leisurely activities through the lens of a security camera, a peculiar occurrence unfurled before my eyes. One of his cherished toys, a dormant sphere that had been motionless for what seemed like an eternity, commenced a slow, methodical descent towards my bewildered pet. Two minutes prior, he had stood statue-like, his movements non-existent, but now the ball rolled toward him with a ghostly grace. I watched, paralyzed by both fear and fascination, as my cat's gaze shifted towards a shadowy corner of my bedroom, fixated upon an unseen entity. With every fiber of my being, I am convinced that an otherworldly presence has claimed residence within the very walls that enclose me. Though I hesitate to ascribe malice to its intentions, there exists an undeniable sense of its ethereal existence. What course of action should I embark upon to confront this supernatural enigma? Should I dabble in the old age ritual of burning sage, hoping to purge my abode of any lingering spirits? Or perhaps in a daring act of defiance, should I ignore the unsettling occurrences, convincing myself that the mundane trappings of an aging estate are to blame? And what if, against all reason, this unseen entity harbors malevolent intentions lurking within the shadowy recesses of my home? The tale I present may sound like a mere cry for renovations or a fanciful delusion conjured by an overactive imagination, yet the inexplicable rolling of the solitary ball, the haunting melodies that waft through empty corridors, and the inexplicable occurrences that persist within my very presence defy the boundaries of reason. Thus I beseech your guidance, for I am but a mere mortal, entangled in a web of the supernatural, grappling with forces beyond my comprehension. Story number nine. I still have no explanation for this irrational fear. When I reflect on my childhood, a vivid memory surfaces encapsulating the sheer audacity and fearlessness that defined my early years. Even as a little kid, I seemed impervious to fear, embarking on daring exploits that most would shy away from. Before I even set foot in first grade, I fearlessly roamed the wilderness, capturing snakes with my bare hands. Bullies, regardless of their age or size, were no match for me, as I never backed down from a fight. I recall a time in second grade, when I gazed at a towering five-story building, its blocks nestled in the corner, and I thought to myself, I can probably climb that. And without hesitation, I ascended its exterior, defying gravity and astounding onlookers. In those early years, my family resided in a charming yet minuscule one-horse town nestled in the heart of Ohio. With the population of a mere 1,500, it was the epitome of a close-knit community where everyone was acquainted with one another and privy to each other's affairs. During my fourth grade year, my older sister, who held a two and a half year advantage, embarked on a Halloween escapade, engaging in the timeless tradition of trick-or-treating. Oh, how I long for those days when one could just traverse the neighborhood for hours on end, their candy-filled bags requiring periodic emptying before continuing the adventure. As we meandered through the dimly lit streets, the night carried an air of enchantment, 
even in the presence of our sibling rivalry. Laughter and anticipation filled the air, permeating the chilly October breeze. And then it happened. A seemingly ordinary house loomed before us, its windows glowing warmly, promising sugary treasures. With excitement brimming, we approached the door, ready to utter the familiar phrase, trick or treat. However, fate had other plans. In the blink of an eye as the door creaked open, an indescribable force washed over me, a tidal wave of absolute terror that froze me in place. My body instinctively reacted, and before my trembling lips could form the words, I turned on my heels and sprinted away, my pounding heart drowning out the sounds of the Halloween merriment. It was a flight response I had never experienced before, an overwhelming fear that bypassed rational thought and propelled me to escape as quickly as humanly possible. Once a block away, my fear began to subside, and a realization struck me. I had left my sister behind, defenseless and vulnerable. Guilt flooded my veins, but embarrassment and shame compelled me to suppress the truth. Rather than confessing my cowardice, I concocted a feeble excuse, asserting that I had fled because she did, utilizing my swiftness as an alibi for abandoning her in the face of terror. I dared not admit the depths of my own fright, for I prided myself on my resilience and perceived invincibility. Inevitably, my sister caught up with me, her heavy breaths and bewildered expression mirrored my own disorientation. With a mix of curiosity and concern, I mustered the courage to inquire, Why did you run away? To my surprise, she seemed oblivious to the fact that I had initiated our fight. Her eyes betrayed genuine confusion as she uttered, I don't know, I was scared for my life. It was in that moment of vulnerability, her admission of fear, that I found solace in divulging my own trepidation. The floodgates opened, allowing us to share our deepest anxieties, transcending the boundaries of sibling rivalry. Throughout my life, I had encountered countless brushes with death, traversing treacherous paths that tested the limits of my courage. Yet never before had I experienced such a consuming and paralyzing terror as that fateful Halloween night. It defied logic, for the house that evoked this profound dread was not some haunted mansion on the outskirts of town, but an ordinary residence nestled on an unassuming street. The woman who greeted us at the door bore no eerie semblance, exuded no threatening aura. She was simply an average housewife, indistinguishable from others residing in the town at the time. In my recollection, she did not utter a single word or engage in any menacing gestures. She merely opened the door, and upon glimpsing her, my sister and I were instantly engulfed in an overwhelming, inexplicable terror. To this day, the origins of that unfathomable fear remain shrouded in mystery, an enigma forever etched in our shared memory. Neither I nor my sister possess an explanation, for it defies comprehension. Perhaps it was an otherworldly force, an intangible specter, haunting that seemingly ordinary abode. Or perchance the universe had conspired to awaken dormant fears within our young hearts, serving a reminder of our mortality. Whatever the cause, the incident forever shattered the illusion of invincibility I had meticulously cultivated throughout my childhood, replacing it with a humbling awareness of the vast depths of the human emotion and the fragility of our bravado. Story number 10. The ghost I saw was the future of me. During my freshman year of college in the mid-80s, I had the privilege of attending a small private college nestled in the heart of the Midwest. This institution, founded in the mid-1800s, boasted a rich and captivating history, rife with paranormal tales that had become stuff of legend. Little did I know that I would soon find myself entangled in a spine-chilling encounter that would forever leave its mark on me. Situated on a picturesque campus, our college was nestled in a peculiar geographical formation, a large bowl-shaped landscape. The student center occupied the central position within this natural concavity, while the dormitories and classrooms perched atop a higher ground encircling the quote-unquote bowl. Consequently, 
every journey to the dorms or classrooms involved a brisk uphill walk, affording us a splendid view of the edifices as we ascended. It was on a fateful night around 10 p.m., as I meandered back to my dorm room, that the extraordinary unfolded before my very eyes. Casting a casual gaze towards my windows, which consisted of two sets of double windows spaced about five feet apart, I noticed a figure moving across them from right to left. The image was partially obscured, yet I discerned the silhouette of an adult male, towering at approximately six feet tall, adorned with long, dark hair and a flowing beard. Strikingly, he exuded an uncanny resemblance to the iconic depictions of Jesus Christ. The figure traversed from the right set of windows, disappearing momentarily behind a section of brick wall, only to re-emerge in front of the left windows. Initially, anger surged within me. Who dared to invade my sanctum? Thoughts of a trespasser raced through my mind as I sprinted up the incline toward my dormitory. Perched on the third floor, my windows occupied a central position within the building. I rushed through the door, mindful of its self-closing mechanism, which required the placement of a substantial object to prevent it from slamming shut. The doors, to compound matters, were perpetually locked. If one left their room without their key, they would be locked out and compelled to pay a $5 fee. Upon re-entering my room, I quickly surveyed the surroundings, seeking any signs of disturbance. To my immense relief, nothing seemed amiss, and my belongings remained untouched. My precious stash remained intact, undisturbed by the phantom visitor. Driven by a need for answers, I descended the stairs in haste to consult my best friend and former roommate, who still possessed a key to my room. Upon reaching his door, I noticed he and his girlfriend in a state of undress, clearly preoccupied within the confines of their own space. It became abundantly clear that he had not ventured outside recently, extinguishing any suspicion of his involvement. With mounting frustration, I dashed back upstairs, knocking urgently on the door of our resident advisor, rudely interrupting his slumber. I demanded an explanation, accusing him of granting access to my room to an unauthorized individual. Bewildered and groggy, he vehemently denied any knowledge of the incident, affirming that he had been fast asleep all along. Devoid of answers, I retreated to my room, determined to conduct a thorough examination for any subtle signs of intrusion. As I scrutinized the layout meticulously, an alarming realization washed over me. It struck me with an undeniable force. I suddenly comprehended that it would have had been impossible for anyone to traverse both the left and windows. My desk, occupying the space between the two windows, jutted out into the room, forming an insurmountable barrier. Anyone attempting to walk in front of the windows would have been compelled to pass directly through my desk, a feat that defied the laws of physics. Reluctantly, I reconciled myself to the possibility that this encounter belonged to the realm of the inexplicable, another mysterious incident in our college's paranormal chronicles. It was a perplexing occurrence that, for a fleeting moment, gripped me with fear and bewilderment. Nevertheless, as the years elapsed, the memory gradually receded into the recesses of my mind, and life resumed its course. Fast forward five years later, while engrossed in my daily routine of preparing for work one morning, a seemingly mundane act shattered the tranquility of my existence. As I stood before the bathroom mirror, gently brushing my teeth, I glanced up, only to be confounded with the sight that froze my blood and sent chills cascading down my arms. Staring back at me, reflected in the mirror, was the same face, the identical visage of the enigmatic figure that had traversed my college room years before. Time had etched its marks, and I now sported shoulder-length hair and a beard, a feature that often prompted teasing from my friends, who playfully likened me to Christ-like appearances I had witnessed. For a brief moment, my word tilted on its axis, my whole world. The implications were spine-tingling, hinting at a connection that transcended rational comprehension. Yet, as swiftly as the realization had surfaced, a wave of rationality washed over me, extinguishing the flames of apprehension. 
Perhaps it was merely a curious twist of fate, a bizarre coincidence destined to leave me perplexed but ultimately inconsequential, and so I found solace in dismissing this unexplainable phenomenon as nothing more than a peculiar incident that had woven itself into the tapestry of my existence. A brush with the inexplicable, an enigma that refused to yield its secrets. Life moved on, the memories faded, but the lingering sense of wonder remained, a constant reminder that there is much more to this world that defies our understanding. Story number 11. Abandoned Prison. It was another mundane day in our small hometown, and my girlfriend and I were yearning for excitement. We often found ourselves growing bored with the familiar surroundings, craving adventure and the thrill of the unknown. Our solution? Exploring abandoned places scattered across our state, some of which were even rumored to be haunted. These eerie locations held a certain allure for us, drawing us in with their mysteries and untold stories. One day as I sat browsing on my computer, I stumbled upon a remarkable discovery. A prison tucked away about three hours from our town piqued my interest. Its history whispered tales of dark secrets and paranormal occurrences. Intrigued, I shared my findings with my girlfriend, and together we decided to embark on a journey to this forsaken penitentiary. We settled on the upcoming 4th of July, assuming that the holiday would ensure an empty and desolate atmosphere, allowing us to explore undisturbed. Our expectations were surpassed as we arrived at the prison grounds. The imposing structure loomed before us, its sheer size accentuated by the numerous buildings scattered throughout the compound. From cell blocks to indoor workout areas, the architecture showcased the haunting remnants of its past. Guard towers and impenetrable fencing enclosed the premises, discouraging any attempts to enter without resorting to breaking the chain links. Cautiously, we parked our car beside a cluster of trees in the front parking lot, wanting to remain inconspicuous, of course. With a sense of trepidation mixed with excitement, we made our way toward the main building's entrance, the very gateway once used for prisoner intake. Much to our surprise, the front door yielded effortlessly to our touch, swinging open with an eerie creak. This unexpected ease of entry sent a shiver down our spines, but we pressed onward, driven by our shared curiosity. Passing through the entrance, we found ourselves fully immersed within the prison's desolate interior. The atmosphere was a stark contrast to the outside world, a vast open space with interconnecting sidewalks and courtyards linking the various buildings together. Yet, there were subtle signs that something was amiss. Dead crows lined the sidewalks, their lifeless bodies a macabre welcome. It was as though they had flown over the prison only to succumb to an inexplicable fate, falling from the sky like dark omens. Even the graffiti adorning the walls consisted of cryptic symbols, a language foreign to our understanding. Undeterred by the uncanny surroundings, we continued our exploration, through a newfound unease was settling upon us. As we traversed the present's complex layout, my eyes caught sight of letters adorning the building, A, B, C, each marking a regular cell block. Cautiously, we passed by block B, a peculiar thought lodged itself in my mind. Perhaps it was the narcissistic allure of seeing my initial displayed prominently, but I couldn't shake off the notion that we should investigate further. Though peculiar, I heeded this impulse, allowing it to guide our steps. The cell blocks formed the shape of a towering T, with a central guard station and a ladder leading up to the second floor. An isolated realm where guards could monitor the inmates without risking direct interaction. The upper area connected to a dimly lit hallway, housing a boiler room and a door leading to a downward staircase. I ascended those stairs, my heart pounding in my chest, a mixture of anticipation and anxiety coursing through my veins. When I reached the top and stood before that foreboding hallway, I paused, transfixed by a sense of foreboding. 
With trembling hands, I illuminated the hallway's depths with the feeble glow of my phone's flashlight. Despite the bright daylight streaming in from outside, my light seemed to vanish after a mere inch, swallowed by the oppressive darkness. A chill ran down my spine, a frizzen of fear slicing through the scorching southern heat that typically enveloped me. Compelled by an inexplicable urge, I voiced the question that lingered in my mind. If there is anyone here with us, make yourself known. The words hung in the stale air, and in the pitch-black abyss a sound emerged. A faint scurrying, akin to a small animal seeking refuge. A wave of relief washed over me as I attributed the noise to a harmless creature, attempting to rationalize away the unsettling atmosphere. However, my solace was short-lived, abruptly shattered by a bone-chilling symphony of footsteps thundering toward me. The approaching footsteps echoed through the corridor, a cacophony of colossal feet propelled by an otherworldly force, sprinting directly in my direction. Pure instinct took over me as I bolted out of the building, my girlfriend closing, trailing behind me. Panic and adrenaline surged through her veins as we sprinted down the stairs, desperate to escape the pursuing terror. Breathless and trembling, we finally emerged from the confines of that ominous place. As we stood outside, our gazes locked, we shared an unspoken understanding. The presence we encountered within those walls was unequivocally unwelcome. Despite our harrowing experience, we mustered the courage to venture cautiously around other parts of the prison grounds. Yet, an ever-present sensation of being observed lingered, casting a shadow upon our every move. The weight of an unseen gaze pressed upon us, an intangible presence that whispered secrets we dared not comprehend. It was with immense relief that we finally exited through the same front door that had beckoned us inward. Stepping into the outside world felt akin to shedding a suffocating shroud of malevolent energy. Still trembling, we sought solace in the familiarity of our car, its interior offering a refuge from the haunting memories that clung to our consciousness. In a bid to dispel the lingering unease, we turned to the age-old ritual of burning sage, its fragrant smoke rising like a protective veil, banishing the remnants of the prison's dark aura. Though we attempted to bury the memories, our minds occasionally wander back to that fateful day, contemplating the enigma that we had unwittingly stumbled upon. What did we encounter within those foreboding walls? What dark secrets lay hidden, forever locked away within the confines of that prison? These questions linger, etching themselves into the fabric of our memories, serving as a constant reminder of the unseen realms that coexist alongside our own. Story number 12. Scary Apartment. True story, I wish it wasn't. Three years ago, my mom and I found ourselves in a tough financial situation, forcing us to reside in a modest one-bedroom apartment. Located in Tacoma, Washington, our dwelling was a quaint but aging Victorian home that had been divided into four separate units. Ever since I was a child, I possessed an uncanny sensitivity to energy whether it emanated from individuals or places. Consequently, I could easily detect any hint of negativity in my surroundings. From the moment that we moved into, into that apartment, I sensed an inexplicable unease. I cannot say that it felt evil, but there was an undeniable offness to the whole place. A few months into our stay, I decided to spend the night at my boyfriend's place, an uncommon occurrence for me. Around 9.30 p.m., my phone rang, and upon answering, I immediately discerned my mother's distress. She asked if I was at my boyfriend's and whether I was all right. Assuring her that I was perfectly fine, I inquired about the reason behind her concern. She proceeded to recount a disconcerting experience that she had just encountered. It seemed that she had retired to bed, preparing to drift off to sleep, when she suddenly heard my voice shout her name. Initially, I questioned whether it had been nothing more than a frightful dream, but she insisted that she had barely settled into bed, wide awake, and then my voice had reverberated through the room, as if I were standing right outside the doorway, bellowing for her attention. 
Though we both attempted to dismiss the incident from our minds, my mother became increasingly convinced that there was an ominous presence in our apartment, purposely attempting to intimidate her. A week later, she decided to try and cleanse the apartment using Palo Santo, a sacred wood known for its purifying properties. Once again, she performed the ritual while I was away, but she called me, trembling with fear, imploring me to return home. Upon my arrival, she relayed the events that had unfolded during her attempt to rid the apartment of negativity. She had followed the customary procedure, starting from the front door and making her way to the living room, bedroom, bathroom, and finally the kitchen. As she reached the threshold of the living room, where we had a small table and chairs, she froze in terror. The chair she typically sat on was inexplicably pulled out from the table, its back legs teetering precariously as if someone or something had deliberately disturbed it. I tried my best to reassure her, promising that we would begin searching for a new place to live. However, we both knew that our financial constraints would likely prolong the process. A month passed, and one evening as I lounged on the couch while my mother prepared dinner, her sudden scream jolted me into action. Hastily, I rushed into the kitchen only to find her visibly shaken. She recounted a perplexing incident that had just occurred. My mother had placed the knife she was using on the cutting board and momentarily turned her attention to the sink, intending to retrieve another vegetable. Yet, when she pivoted back to the cutting board, the knife had inexplicably vanished. Perplexed, she checked the counters and searched around the sink, but there was no trace of the knife. Frustrated, she opened a drawer to receive another knife, but when she turned back to the cutting board, there it was, a disconcerting, reappearing act that defied all rational explanation. Feeling overwhelmed by fear, we made the decision to leave the next day and seek temporary refuge with a friend. Witnessing my brother's profound terror, couldn't shake the feeling that this was not a mere product of her imagination or a consequence of age-related issues. She remained mentally lucid, and I genuinely believed that if we had continued to reside in that apartment, something truly malevolent would have befallen her. Story number 13 object manipulation, and possibly precognition of death. I vividly recall an extraordinary experience that took place during my younger years with one of my closest friends. It all began when he introduced us to a mutual friend from high school, whom we were eager to spend time with. At the time, we were all in our early to mid-twenties, seeking adventure and excitement in our lives. Little did we know that this encounter would lead us down an unexpected path, delving into the realms of the supernatural. As I arrived at this friend's house, a peculiar atmosphere engulfed me. The moment I stepped inside, it became apparent that the house was in a state of disarray. Holes punctured the walls, a layer of grime covered various surfaces, and clothing was strewn haphazardly throughout the premises. Such disorder downstairs left me somewhat astounded, but my curiosity was piqued to explore further. When I finally reached the friend's room, I discovered that it was comparatively tidier, albeit not entirely unscathed by the surrounding chaos. Half-jokingly, I couldn't help but inquire if his abode was haunted, giving its eerie appearance upon my arrival. To my surprise, his eyes flicked with a mixture of curiosity and trepidation as he responded, How did you know? Intrigued by his reaction, I confessed that it was merely a jest. Nevertheless, he proceeded to share a series of spine-chilling experiences that he had encountered within these walls. From hearing the disembodied voices to witnessing objects being inexplicably slashed and the presence of menacing sounds, he was living in constant fear. He wholeheartedly believed that some malevolent force was targeting him. Being both a skeptic and an empathic by nature, a wave of conflicting thoughts washed over me couldn't bear to witness the distress that enveloped my friend, so I resolved to disprove the existence of any supernatural presence. Rummaging through potential strategies, I noticed the necklace adorning my neck, and an idea took hold. Listen, I began, if this entity possesses the level of menace and strength you claim, 
then surely it should be capable of manipulating my necklace if you goad it to do so. Slightly hesitant, yet willing to embark on this peculiar experiment, he agreed, saying, I'm not sure, but let's give it a try. Once again, my skeptical mind took charge, and I meticulously orchestrated the setup. I instructed both of my friends in their positions while I settled upon my friend's bed, prepared to scrutinize every minute detail. Clutching the necklace firmly, I braced my arms, ensuring maximum stability, and I studied the pendant's initial natural spin. After a couple of minutes, I signaled that I was ready to proceed. My friends commenced their taunting, urging the supposed spirit to set the necklace into motion. With my gaze fixated on their hands, ensuring no trickery was at play, I awaited the unfolding of this inexplicable phenomenon. Their voices grew louder and more fervent, repeatedly chanting, Spin it! Spin it! Astonishingly, the feeble rotation of the necklace intensified, gradually expanding in magnitude until its rope-like chain began brushing against my fingertips. It was a bewildering sight, as though an unseen force was physically spinning the pendant, with an intensity that surpassed what I initially anticipated. Yet, my relentless skeptical mind remained unsatisfied. I demanded that my friends instruct the spirit to halt the necklace's motion. Astonishingly, in response to their plea, the necklace gradually decelerated from its forceful spin, reverting to its initial light rotation. The pendant came to an eventual stop, leaving me pondering the extraordinary series of events. However, even this demonstration failed to quell my doubts, for I was plagued with my own insatiable curiosity and self-doubt. I foolishly thought to myself, All right, it went right as expected, but if I instruct them to tell the spirit to spin it left, that should be impossible now. Thus, I proposed the seemingly impossible, urging my friends to command a change in direction. To my astonishment, the necklace's natural spin abruptly halted, transitioning into a vigorous counterclockwise rotation akin to its earlier display of force. Overwhelmed by a mixture of fear and fascination, I finally relinquished my grip on the necklace, allowing it to drop onto the bed. It was an intense sequence of events that had transpired precisely as directed. Rational and explanations eluded me as I tried to make sense of this inexplicable occurrence. The best my logical mind could conjure was the possibility that, unbeknownst to me, I had unconsciously manipulated the necklace myself. However, this explanation seemed far-fetched, as I had consciously prepared myself, ensuring that no involuntary movements could be attributed to my actions. In hindsight, I regretted not placing the necklace upon an inanimate object, which would have eliminated any suspicion of human interference. Alas, my failure in to anticipate such an astounding turn of events left me dumbfounded. Determined to seek answers, I yearned to replicate this perplexing phenomenon, intending to conduct further tests within the confines of my friend's haunted house. However, fate intervened, and tragedy struck just a week later when this friend succumbed to a fatal drug overdose. The loss devastated us all, leaving an indelible void in our lives, with his untimely passing, any opportunity to revisit the enigmatic occurrence surrounding the necklace experiment was tragically snuffed out, forever shrouded in the realm of the unexplained. To this day, the memories of that inexplicable event continue to haunt me. I've exhaustively racked my brain, desperately seeking a natural explanation for the inexplicable. The notion that I had inadvertently manipulated the necklace remains the most plausible, though unsatisfying explanation. However, I cannot dismiss the peculiar synchronization between the words uttered by my friends and the necklace's response. It defies the boundaries of rationality, challenging my fundamental understanding of the whole world. In my quest for answers, I've considered alternate possibilities. Perhaps it was an elaborate ruse carefully staged to deceive me. Yet, I find it difficult to believe that both my friends would go to such great lengths to deceive me especially considering their genuine astonishment and apprehension throughout the entire encounter. Another hypothesis that has crossed my mind is the presence of some unknown magnetic phenomenon or energy that influenced the necklace's movement. 
However, such explanations veer into the realm of speculation and stretch the limits of plausibility. Failing to adequately account for the precise and responsive nature of the necklace's actions, as time marches on, I have yet to come to accept that this inexplicable occurrence may forever remain an enigma. The memory of that fateful day serves as a humbling reminder of the vast mysteries that lie beyond our comprehension. It's a testament of the unfathomable nature of the universe, reminding us that even with our vast knowledge and understanding, there are phenomena that elude explanation, leaving us to marvel at the awe-inspiring wonders that surround us. Story number 14, Noises in the Attic Living in my top floor apartment with segmented attics, inaccessible to anyone else but myself, has been a source of concern for me for quite some time now, approximately a year and a half to be precise. It all began with these peculiar occurrences that have been transpiring at random intervals throughout each day. I would hear these faint yet distinct sounds, resembling a scurrying or scratching, as if emanating directly from above me. Initially, my assumption was that it must be rats or birds that had somehow found their way into the attic. However, as time went on, doubt started creeping into my mind, casting uncertainty upon my original explanation. To add weight to my growing suspicions, even my family members have heard these enigmatic sounds. It's not solely a figment of my imagination. Others have shared in the experience, too, determined to unveil the truth behind these perplexing noises. I resolved last year to venture into the attic myself. It's worth noting that the attic ceiling is quite low, and I don't entirely trust the stability of the structure. The last thing I want is to accidentally fall through the fragile surface and land in a rather comical fashion. Equipped with a ladder and a trusty flashlight, I cautiously ascended into the attic, my heart pounding with a mixture of anticipation and trepidation. As the beam of light pierced through the darkness, revealing the contents of the attic, my eyes scanned the surroundings. What greeted me were all remnants of the past, an assortment of old chairs, a baby walker that had once supported my unsteady steps during my childhood, and a sea of insulation, seemingly frozen in time. However, there were no signs of avian inhabitants or scuttling rodents, no birds, no rats, no animals of any sort to account for the persistent sounds that had haunted me. Choosing to brush aside my disquietude, I resigned myself to accepting the presence of these inexplicable noises as an enigma beyond my comprehension. Life moved forward, and the sounds persisted, becoming an unsettling soundtrack to my daily routine. Though the noises usually lasted for fleeting moments, there were occasions when they lingered, sending shivers down my spine and leaving me with an eerie feeling that something was amiss. But it was the recent event that spurred me to share this story. Just moments ago, while I was engrossed in my mundane activities, an abrupt thud resonated from above, causing me to jump in alarm. Immediately I sought solace in the company of my mother, frantically asking if she too had heard the unsettling sound. To my relief, she confirmed that she had indeed heard it, initially attributing the noise to my own doing. It was clear that we shared a common unease. Summoning my courage, I fetched the ladder and flashlight once more, preparing myself for an even more thorough investigation this time. With renewed determination, I gazed upward, scrutinizing every nook and cranny, meticulously clearing away the layers of insulation and other discarded debris that obscured my line of sight. Yet, despite my efforts, there was nothing out of the ordinary to be found. The perplexing enigma of the attic sounds remained unsolved, leaving me perplexed and filled with a mix of curiosity and trepidation. The questions continued to haunt my mind. What could be causing these unexplained disturbances? Were they figments of my imagination? mere echoes of an overactive mind? Or was there a deeper, more sinister force at play? As I write this account, the attic looms above me, its secrets still concealed within its segmented chambers. The inexplicable noises persist, both vexing and captivating my thoughts. It seems that for now, 
I must resign myself to the unknowable nature of this enigma as I brace myself for the next unanticipated scurrying, scratching, or perhaps even another mysterious thud that will shake me from the realm of normalcy and plunge me further into the labyrinth of the unknown. Story number 15. New House, New Ghosts. A couple of years ago, I made the decision to embark on a new chapter in my life and move into an apartment. Little did I know that this decision would lead me down a path filled with strange encounters and unexplainable occurrences. The first sign of what was to come happened on the very first day of moving in when I encountered my housemate, whom I had only met once before. As I opened the front door to my new abode, I was greeted with a peculiar sight. At the end of a seemingly endless entranceway hallway, I spotted my housemate standing there. Now when I say endless, I must admit that I'm slightly exaggerating. The truth is, the hallway was rather long, extending for about 7 meters, but the amplification of the length in my memory was due to the shock of the encounter that awaited me. Despite my initial surprise, I greeted my housemate with a warm smile. However, instead of reciprocating the gesture, she hastily ran up the stairs and disappeared from sight. I assumed that she had simply forgotten about my move-in date, and my unexpected presence had startled her. Being the understanding person that I am, I decided to give her some space and let her settle in at her own pace. So I made my way upstairs to my room, eager to start unpacking my belongings and make the space truly feel like home. As I busied myself with the task at hand, my phone suddenly rang. It was my housemate calling, but something seemed off. In the background, I could hear the distinct noises of a checkout machine. Perplexed, I anxiously asked her what she was, as I assumed she must have been home since I had seen her inside the house earlier. In a rush, she hurried back home, and together we embarked on a thorough search of the entire house. To our astonishment, we found no sign of anyone else. Confused and slightly unnerved, I recounted what I had witnessed to my housemate. It was then that she revealed a chilling revelation of her own. Apparently, when she first moved into the apartment, her friend who had been helping her also witnessed the same mysterious girl. He had caught a glimpse of her running down the stairs and hiding in the storage space beneath them. Reminiscent of a famous Harry Potter underneath the stair cupboard, mistaking her for my housemate, he mischievously decided to play a prank by blocking her path with a rock, only to discover later that she was, in fact, bringing boxes into the apartment. Despite the eerie nature of these encounters, we both agreed that there was no need to panic, as the spirit, if it was indeed a spirit, didn't exhibit any malevolent behavior. We chalked it up to a peculiar coincidence and chose to continue living in the apartment, hoping that the strange incidents would be nothing more than isolated occurrences. However, as fate would have it, a month or two later, our tranquility was shattered once again. This time, it was a phone call from the real estate agency that sent chills down our spines. They informed us that an article was being published about our apartment, and they wanted us to collect a copy. Naturally, we were thrilled at the prospect of our humble abode being featured in the local paper. It was an exciting moment, or so we thought. Little did we know that the article held a dark secret, one that would turn our excitement into fear. As we eagerly read through the pages, our eyes widened in horror. The article revealed that a tragic murder had taken place within the very walls of our apartment. Even more disturbingly, the case remained unsolved, leaving a lingering sense of unease in the air. And to add another layer of terror, the murder had occurred in none other than my own bedroom. Suddenly, everything started to make sense. The mysterious lady that we had encountered the unexplainable events and the eerie atmosphere that seemed to permeate my room all fell into place like a macabre jigsaw puzzle. It appeared that we were sharing our living space with a restless spirit trapped between the realms of the living and the dead. From that point forward, our lives became intertwined with the paranormal. My bedroom, in particular, became a focal point for the inexplicable happenings. Shadows danced on the walls when there was no light source, 
Objects moved on their own accord, and chilling whispers echoed in the dead of night. It seemed as though the spirit of the murdered woman was desperately trying to communicate with us, perhaps seeking justice or closure for her untimely demise. As we navigated this newfound world of the supernatural, our courage was tested and our nerves were pushed to the brink. We sought solace in each other's company, finding strength in our shared experiences. Together we conducted research, delving into the history of the apartment and uncovering fragments of the murdered woman's life. With each discovery, we grew more determined to bring peace to her tormented soul. Our nights were filled with investigations using EVP recorders to capture the whispers that echoed throughout the apartment. We consulted psychics and paranormal experts, hoping to gain insight into the spirit's intentions. It became our mission to unravel the mysteries of our haunted dwelling and find a way to set the lost soul free. Months turned into years, and our journey continued. We faced countless sleepless nights, terrified but unwavering in our determination. Slowly but surely, we started to piece together the fragments of the murdered woman's life. Through old newspaper clippings, public records, and interviews with local residents, we discovered her name, her passions, and the tragic circumstances surrounding her death. Armed with this, we sought closure for the tormented spirit. We held seances in my bedroom, reaching out to the other side, hoping to provide a voice for the voiceless. And finally, after years of relentless pursuit, we succeeded. The spirit, grateful for our efforts, revealed the truth behind her murder and identified her killer. With this newfound information, we approached the authorities, presenting the evidence that we had gathered over the years. The cold case was reignited, and the investigation into the woman's murder was reopened. Thanks to our relentless dedication, justice was finally served, and the guilty party was brought to account for their heinous actions. As we reflect back on that fateful decision to move into the apartment with a stranger, we realize that it was more than just mere coincidence. It was a calling a mission that brought us face to face with the supernatural and allowed us the right, or sorry, it allowed us to right a terrible wrong. Our lives were forever changed by this haunting experience and the bond between my housemates and me grew stronger than ever. Though our apartment will forever carry the weight of its dark past, we can rest knowing that we played a part in bringing peace to the restless soul that once dwelled within its walls. And as we move forward, forever changed by the paranormal, we carry the lessons learned and the memories made, forever grateful for the opportunity to be part of a story that transcends the boundaries of the living and the dead. Story number 16. Uncle who passed a year ago visited me. My uncle passed away on the 27th of last year, and his absence has left a void in my life. Growing up, I spent a significant amount of time with my aunt and her family, so naturally I had cherished memories with my uncle. However, as I ventured off to university, I had moved away, causing our encounters to become less frequent over the years. When my uncle was diagnosed with cancer, I made it a priority to support my aunt in any way that I could following the circle of caring rules anyway. Although I didn't consider myself a part of the inner circle, I made sure to send her incredible care packages and regularly checked in to see if there were any additional ways I could provide support. Now a whole year has passed since his passing, and it was the day after his first death anniversary that I experienced an incredibly vivid dream involving him. These dreams I've had are unlike any ordinary dreams, they feel more real and profound. In this particular dream, my uncle and I had a heartfelt conversation filled with laughter and joy. He exuded an unparalleled sense of carefreeness, happiness, and presence. It was as none of the burdensome distractions of adulthood plagued his mind during our encounter. While I couldn't recall the exact details of our conversation, I vividly remembered his demeanor and the overall atmosphere of the dream. Overwhelmed with emotion, I made a point to share this extraordinary experience with my aunt. 
I composed a text message describing how happy, serene, and present my uncle seemed in the dream. To my surprise, I received an immediate response from my aunt, urgently requesting to speak with me. Understanding the urgency, I swiftly dialed her number, knowing that she was driving home at that moment, taking into account the time difference of the two hours between her location and mine. I began summarizing the essence of the dream conveying my uncle's state of happiness and serenity to her. As I spoke, my aunt interrupted me, her voice filled with anticipation. She explained that she had been keeping a dream journal and asked for my patience as she retrieved it. I anxiously waited on the other end of the line, eager to hear what she had to share. After a brief pause, she commenced reading aloud an entry she had made a few months ago, a dream that resonated deeply with her. Incredibly, the phrases that she captured in her journal mirrored the sentiments I had just shared about my dream. The words serene and present were mentioned repeatedly throughout her dream, along with an overwhelming sense of happiness and various other thoughts that aligned perfectly with my own experience. The revelation left us both astounded and moved. It was as if our dreams had intertwined, allowing us to connect with my late uncle on a profound level. We contemplated the significance of this shared experience, pondering whether it was a mere coincidence or something more extraordinary. Regardless of the explanation, one thing remained certain. We were both confronted by the realization that my uncle's spirit still lingered among us, bringing solace and joy through the ethereal realm of dreams. The inexplicable connection we had experienced reaffirmed our belief that love transcends the boundaries of life and death continuing to unite us in even the most unexpected of ways. Story number 17. House Ghosts and Their Pecking Order. I'm fortunate to call this charming home which was built in the 1800s my own. Its historical significance is undeniable, as it stands as a testament to the neighborhood's growth during that era. Over the years, not only have new homes been added to the area, but some remarkable historic houses have been relocated here as well. My journey in this house began in 1999 when I moved in with my boyfriend at the time. He had been residing here for several years before he encouraged me to join him. However, our story took an unexpected turn when I changed the locks in 2007, leading to his eventual departure, but that tale is best left for another time. Throughout my life, I've possessed a heightened sensitivity to the energies of others, accompanied by a remarkable ability known as clairalliance. This peculiar gift has allowed me to perceive scents and aromas that are beyond the reach of the ordinary senses, Additionally, I have experienced moments of clairvoyance where I could predict both random and, at times, profound events. The spectrum of these predicaments span from pleasant occurrences to those that hold more ominous auras. When I first settled into the house, I had already been engaging in various practices aimed at enhancing my spiritual well-being. Yoga, healing touch, and guided meditation were regular components of my routine, it was during these tranquil moments that I encountered a rather perplexing phenomenon. On multiple occasions, I would be jolted out of a peaceful slumber by the sound of a deep voice whispering ancient words directly into my ear. Though I could appreciate the attempt at communication, it undeniably sent shivers down my spine. After enduring several near heart attacks, I summoned the courage to address the unseen entity. Please, I implored. Stop communicating with me audibly. Your words instill fear within me. Instead, find alternative means, such as images or any other form of contact. Remarkably, from that moment on, I never heard another utterance from that particular presence. As the fall season descends upon us, the activity of the house's resident spirits intensifies. During this time, I become aware of the presence of two distinct entities— each exuding their own unique energy. However, I cannot shake the feeling that there is yet another, a silent observer lurking within the shadows. The primary ghost appears to be mischievous in nature, as evidenced by the antics that transpired throughout the autumn months. 
It is during this period that objects mysteriously vanish, only to reappear in unlikely locations. Delicate items will inexplicably inch their way to the edge of the counter or table, teetering precariously before succumbing to gravity with a resounding crash. Interestingly, this particular phenomenon is not exclusive to this abode alone. I recall a similar incident during my college years when a small glass dish, a cherished gift from my former boyfriend, inexplicably began rocking back and forth across the room before meeting its untimely demise on the floor. Furthermore, keys and eyeglasses often go missing, only to resurface in the most illogical places imaginable, defying all rational explanations. During periods of my absence, a couple who were acquainted with my ex and his first wife kindly volunteered to house it on multiple occasions. It was during one of these stays that the paranormal made itself known. As the husband nonchalantly strolled through the house, one of the resident ghosts tapped him gently on the shoulder. Although he wasn't frightened per se, the unexpected encounter did startle him momentarily. Intriguingly, I have since forged a friendship with this couple, and our conversations occasionally venture into the realm of the supernatural as we share our experiences and observations regarding the enigmatic entities that inhabit this house. It is worth noting that during the Great Depression, when the economic struggles of the era necessitated alternative living arrangements, this house opened its doors to multiple room rentals. It's my belief that some of the lingering spirits within these walls trace their origins back to that tumultuous time. Their presence serves as a reminder of the hardships endured by those who sought refuge within this dwelling, during an era marked by uncertainty and adversity. As I reflect on the extraordinary journey that has unfolded within the confines of this historic abode, I can't help but marvel at the intertwining of human lives and the ethereal realm. It's a testament to the enduring power of the past, and these ghosts from a bygone era continue to make their presence felt in the present day. And so I embrace the rich tapestry of spirits that call this house home, cherishing the memories, the encounters, and the unexplained phenomena that have shaped my life within these hollowed halls. Story number 18. There's something in my house that is determined to make me go crazy. As I sit here reflecting on the events that have unfolded over the past few weeks, I can't help but feel a mixture of confusion, fear, and an overwhelming need to protect my precious daughter. You see, my daughter's just a month old, and her father and I reside together in an incredibly cramped house. In order to maximize the limited space, we decided to set up our bed in my daughter's cradle in the living room. It seemed like a practical solution at the time, given that the bedroom barely surpasses the size of a walk-in closet. Our living room, however, boasts a double doorway, sans door, and leading into the kitchen. One night about a week ago, the clock ticked past 3.30 a.m. My daughter had just been fed, changed, and carefully nestled back to sleep. With both my fiancé and my little one peacefully slumbering, I took a moment to revel in the tranquility of the silence. Stepping out into the front porch, I decided to indulge in a quick cigarette. As I savored the familiar taste, a sense of serenity washed over me. That is, until I heard it. The shrill, blood-curdling scream of my daughter. It pierced through the night, shattering the stillness. Panic seized me instantly, and I discarded my cigarette hastily before rushing back inside. To my bewilderment, as I burst into the living room, my daughter lay undisturbed, sound asleep. Her delicate form was positioned exactly as it had been when I last checked on her before venturing outside. My fiancé, seemingly oblivious to the commotion, continued to emit soft snores, blissfully ignorant of what had just transpired. This struck me as odd since he's typically a light sleeper who would have awakened at the slightest disturbance. The television played in the background, emitting a gentle glow and filling the room with soothing piano music, a live video from YouTube that I often played to lull my daughter to sleep. There was no possibility of a prank video or any other external source causing the sudden outburst. The whole episode left me in a state of unease, 
preventing me from finding solace and slumber for the remainder of the night. Now fast forward to tonight. It's around 3.45 a.m., and I had just succeeded in making my daughter go back to sleep after her feeding. Seeking a jolt of caffeine to combat my sleep-deprived state, I ventured into the kitchen to brew a cup of coffee. As I busied myself with the process, an unfamiliar sound invaded the air, subtly drawing my attention. From the corner of my eye, I caught a glimpse of something peculiar, an ominous towering shadow draped in an inky blackness, hunched over my fiancé's head. My gaze fixed directly upon it, only to witness its sudden disappearance. In that very instant, my fiancé emitted a peculiar choked noise, as if something had disturbed him. Fear gripped my heart, and without a moment's hesitation, I propelled myself onto the bed, shaking him awake, desperate to ensure his safety. Disoriented and still ensnared in the clutches of sleep, my fiancé responded, assuring me that he was fine. He mumbled disjointed words, mentioning a peculiar dream that had distracted him from what he was supposed to be focused on. Intrigued and alarmed, I inquired further, prompting him to reveal with an unsettling calmness that his attention had been diverted by the enigmatic figure leaning over him. A figure that should not exist in the realm of dreams alone. A chill ran down my spine and a profound sense of foreboding settled upon us both. As I find myself grappling with these inexplicable occurrences, my mind races, trying to comprehend the implications they hold for the safety of my well-being and my family. Questions abound, yet answers elude me. What force or presence is haunting our humble abode? Is it drawn to my innocent daughter? Or does it harbor intentions that remain shrouded in the depths of darkness? We are left with an unsettled uncertainty, an uneasiness that permeates the very fabric of our lives. Sleep evades me, as if I'm plagued by thoughts of protecting my daughter from this enigmatic phenomenon. I ponder the possibilities considering every avenue that might lead to the unraveling of the mystery that enshrouds us. What ancient forces have unwittingly awakened within the confines of our tiny dwelling? Is there a sinister history attached to this house? One that we were unaware of when we moved in? I'm determined to uncover the truth to confront this unseen presence that has intruded upon our lives so profoundly. For now we remain vigilant, our senses heightened and our hearts burdened with the weight of the unknown. As the night presses on, we brace ourselves for what lies ahead, clinging to hope that we might safeguard our daughter from the mysterious forces that threaten to disrupt our fragile existence. Story number 19, Lost Time at Lost Lake. My unforgettable hiking experience took place during a solo camping trip at the enchanting Lake Dubonnet campsites, located to the west of the lake near Interlochen, Missouri. Eager to explore the surrounding natural beauty, I embarked on a hike near the nearby Lost Lake, a name that proved eerily fitting for what I was about to encounter. As I ventured deeper into the wilderness and drew closer to the Lost Lake, a peculiar realization began to dawn upon me. The forest was engulfed in an unsettling silence, devoid of any sound. Not a single chirp of a bird, nor the scampering of a squirrel reached my ears. The absence of life's symphony left me with a sense of otherworldly stillness, causing my mind to question its own reality. Could this be a dream? Why is the forest so hauntingly quiet? Undeterred by the surreal ambiance, I pressed onward my footsteps the only audible noise in the vicinity. Then, like a distant echo, I heard what seemed to be the faint sound of a helicopter gradually growing louder. Confusion coursed through my mind, for I was well aware that the Great Lakes Maritime Academy in Traverse City, but never before had I encountered such a clamor amidst those tranquil woods. My mind desperately attempted to rationalize the situation, concluding that perhaps a helicopter was returning to town. After all, the mind yearns to make sense of the inexplicable. Continuing my trek, the sound persisted, its intensity mounting until it reached a deafening crescendo, almost as if the buzzing sound had taken up residence within my own head. 
Simultaneously, a peculiar sensation gripped me. I felt an uncanny presence lurking behind, as though an unseen bear was hurtling towards me, poised to pounce and unleash its fury. With the helicopter and the cacophony reaching its peak, panic seized me, causing me to whirl around in a frenzied attempt to confront the impending danger. Yet to my bewilderment, there was nothing there. The noise ceased instantly, leaving me feeling as if I had just awakened from a vivid dream. I shook my head in utter confusion, scanning my surroundings feverishly, even gazing skyward in search of an airplane or any sign of what had transpired, only to find emptiness. My state of perplexity knew no bounds, leaving me utterly flabbergasted. The urgency to return to the safety of my tent and vehicle gripped me tightly, but the thought of retracing my steps past Lost Lake filled me with trepidation. Determined to find an alternative route, I forged ahead on the trail, grateful that it's a circular path and it would ultimately guide me back to the familiar comfort of my campsite. Till this day, I've never encountered a similar experience, neither in that precise location nor anywhere else among my journeys. The enigma of that day continues to baffle me, an unsolved mystery that forever remains etched in my memory. In my quest for answers, I found solace in watching shows like Ghost Adventures, where individuals have shared encounters resembling the inexplicable events of my own story. Knowing that others have traversed similar uncharted territories of the supernatural lends a sense of camaraderie, assuring me that I'm not alone in my bewildering encounter with the unknown. Story number 20 Hi all, very certain my home is haunted and looking for some advice. Last April I made the exciting move into my current house, and let me tell you, I absolutely love it. It's got this charming old world vibe, being built back in the 1920s, and it comes with some fantastic features. For starters, there's a semi-finished basement, and I've been working on it, and I can't wait to transform it into my dream space. Then there's the big garage, perfect for all my DIY projects, and the huge yard that my dogs just adore. All in all, it's good stuff all around. However, as much as I adore my new home, there's something peculiar about the basement that has caught my attention, as well as that of my friends. It's an odd feeling, almost as if I'm being watched whenever I'm down there. Even my pets, a dog and a cat, refuse to venture into the basement unless I accompany them. I've noticed some strange behaviors from them as well. My dog, whose kennel is in the living room area of the basement, has started growling and snarling while inside of it. This is particularly concerning because he's never had any issues with his kennel before. In fact, I try to avoid kenneling him unless absolutely necessary. Furthermore, he often barks at the kitchen and basement, staring at them with an intensity that I find quite unnerving. It's truly bizarre behavior. Over the past couple of months, things have taken a turn for the even more unsettling. I've been experiencing some rather blatant paranormal activity. It all began when I distinctly heard a woman coughing in the basement. Naturally, my immediate thought was that someone might be squatting down there, taking advantage of its large size and numerous hiding spots. Concerned, I asked a friend to come over and check it out with me, but to our surprise, we found no one. It was as if the cough had come out of thin air. About a week later, I was sitting on my cozy couch upstairs when I heard a clear and obvious whistle. It was the kind of whistle that you can unmistakably recognize as someone deliberately producing the sound. What made it even more chilling was that it seemed to be coming from my kitchen, which leads directly to the basement. It was as if the person whistling was merely a room away. To my astonishment, both of my pets perked up immediately, their senses heightened and alert. It was as if they too sensed something peculiar about the whistle. More recently, I experienced a couple of incidents that sent shivers down my spine too. First, a Christmas decorative piece that I had placed on my kitchen counter mysteriously moved about an inch or so, seemingly on its own accord. I can assure you there was no draft in my house to justify such a movement. 
Then just today, I witnessed one of my kitchen cabinets closing shut right before my eyes. There was no logical explanation for it, as I was the only person present, and there was certainly no gust of wind or any other plausible force causing it. These incidents left me baffled and on edge. As if these occurrences weren't enough, I constantly hear thumps and the sound of dishes moving around in my kitchen when I'm tucked away in bed at night. The mere thought of investigating these noises terrifies me, so I admit I often choose to ignore them. But let me tell you, it's not just me who's affected by this phenomenon. It irritates my pets as well, particularly my dog. Every time he hears those unsettling sounds, he growls and freaks out, as if trying to warn me about something lurking in the shadows. Now, I can't claim that this is the first time I've experienced paranormal presence in my house, but what I can say is that this particular house takes the prize for being the most quote-unquote active one that I've experienced thus far. The inexplicable events are becoming more intense with each passing day, and I find myself growing increasingly concerned. Sadly, I don't possess much knowledge about the history of the house, and my landlord isn't much help either. He hasn't owned the property for very long, and he's unaware of any previous incidents or peculiarities associated with it. It's frustrating not to have any context or information to work with when trying to understand these supernatural phenomenons. So here I am, left with a burning question. Has anyone else out there experienced anything similar? And if so, what steps should I take to address this escalating activity? I'm desperate for guidance and reassurance, as this situation has been playing on my mind and affecting my sense of peace and security. It's clear that something beyond the natural realm is at play here, and I'm determined to find a solution to bring peace back to my beloved home. Story number 21. I don't know what to think. It was around 4 o'clock in the morning when I found myself roused from my slumber, needing to use the restroom. After completing my business, I made my way back to the bedroom, but something compelled me to linger near the door. I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but an inexplicable uneasiness settled over me. I stood there puzzled when suddenly... I distinctly heard a faint, delicate voice whisper the word, Goodbye. When I say the voice was small, I mean it was minuscule, as if it could fit inside a tiny cold medicine capsule sized. Its size seemed to match the sound that it produced, an almost indiscernible utterance. Strangely enough, I not only heard it but also felt its presence, as though the word had the physical weight that brushed against my senses. Confusion overwhelmed me and I tried to comprehend the peculiar occurrence that had just transpired. Moments later, when I stood there, attempting to make sense of what I had experienced, a slight odd laughter reached my ears. It wasn't as clear as the previous word, but it lingered in the air, leaving an eerie sensation in its wake. As someone who prided myself on being skeptical and grounded in scientific reasoning, I was at a loss for explanation. If I couldn't touch or see something, it was deemed unreal or non-existent, yet the fact that I'd undeniably heard those two distinct sounds rattled my convictions to the core. Now, I must confess that I had been engrossing myself in a multitude of ghostly and paranormal videos on YouTube recently. The ongoing COVID situation had left me with plenty of time on my hands, and those channels such as Slapped Ham and Nukes Top 5 became my nightly fascination. However, as I delved deeper into the spectral realm, an unsettling discomfort started to creep into the corners of my own home, and I couldn't fathom why. It was as if the more I immersed myself in these videos and engaged in discussions surrounding them, the more I inadvertently paved the way for such phenomena to manifest within my own house. It reminded me of the Eldar's ill-fated actions that led to the birth of Slanesh in the Warhammer 40,000 lore, a gradual feeding and nurturing of an unknown force until it gained a tangible presence. But this unsettling incident was not the first of its kind in my home. 
Ever since we moved in, I would occasionally catch a fleeting glimpse of a black smudge darting alongside my armchair in my peripheral vision, a momentary flicker akin to someone swiftly passing by. Similarly, in the basement where I worked, occasionally I caught sight of what seemed like a silhouette of a person walking from left to right in the adjacent room. At first, I dismissed these occurrences as mere figments of my imagination or misconceptions, refusing to believe in their reality. However, it was during a conversation with my children, my son Dill, and my adopted daughter that the pieces of this paranormal puzzle started to come together. They resided in a separate room located in the basement far away from my workspace. When I mentioned the voice and laughter that I had recently encountered, they simply shrugged it off, seemingly unfazed. According to them, we had a friendly spirit dweller underneath the stairs, and they affectionately referred to him as Tony. Tony, they claimed, had interacted with them on numerous occasions, making his presence known in subtle ways. He had even knocked a lamp off a table once, and on certain nights, he would wake them from their slumber, engaging in conversations, although they never mentioned receiving any audible responses. Surprisingly, Tony appeared to be a benevolent presence, with even our dogs showing no sign of distress or agitation in its company. Now I find myself at a loss as to what course of action to take. On one hand, I fear that by acknowledging and paying more attention to these occurrences, I may inadvertently amplify them. Yet, on the other hand, I miss the simple entertainment of watching my beloved ghost videos, although now they hold a disconcerting aura, the thought of burning sage to cleanse the house or seeking the assistance of a priest for a blessing does cross my mind, but I hesitate to take such drastic measures. All I desire is to restore a sense of comfort and normalcy to my home, where I can freely enjoy my ghostly videos without this unnerving backdrop of uncertainty. Ghosts in my rental house. Story number 22. Since my family and I moved into our new rental house, strange occurrences have been unfolding. Upon moving in, I stumbled upon the unsettling revelation that the previous renter had taken their own life several months prior. Initially, I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary, but over the past week, I've had a series of experiences that I feel compelled to share. The first incident took place while I was at home alone one morning, around 8 a.m., I was casually engrossed in my phone, sitting in the living room with the volume turned off so as not to disturb my still-sleeping kids. Suddenly, I heard a loud sound resembling an object sliding across a countertop. Startled, I turned around, peering over the couch to investigate. But, to my bewilderment, everything appeared to be in order, with nothing out of place. Trying to alleviate my unease, I switched on the television at a low volume to fill the house with additional noise. However, a few minutes later, the mysterious sliding sound recurred, just as loud as before. Perplexed, I remained unable to determine its origin. The second unsettling encounter unfolded while I was watching TV in the bedroom at approximately 3 a.m. Sleep eluded me that night, so I opted to use headphones and link them to my device to avoid disturbing my slumbering family. Strangely, the volume on my headphones kept fluctuating on its own, increasing and decreasing without any intervention on my part. Each time it changed, I diligently reset it to the desired level, only to have it readjust itself shortly afterwards. This inexplicable phenomenon left me feeling disconcerted and unsettled. In another bizarre incident, we discovered that our TV remote had gone missing. Frantically, we scoured the entire house, meticulously combing through each room in search of the elusive remote control. Despite our efforts, it seemed to have vanished into thin air, leaving us perplexed and resigned to the belief that it would resurface at some point. Our home is kept in impeccable order, making it even more bewildering that we couldn't locate the remote. Two days later, to our astonishment, my fiancé stumbled upon it, casually lying in the middle of the bonus room floor, a room I had just vacuumed thoroughly. 
the inexplicable reappearance only heightened our senses of unease. Perhaps the most chilling incident occurred at the early hours of the morning when I was rudely awakened at 4 a.m. by a blaring sound of my toddler's tablet playing the Coco Melon's breakfast song. I discovered the tablet lying in the middle of the hallway, nowhere near my children's room, and strangely, when I attempted to turn it off, I noticed it had no Wi-Fi connection at all, and YouTube videos that it played required an internet connection. The lyrics of the song it emitted were hauntingly relevant. Everybody wake up in the morning. Everybody's hungry, I know. Everybody wake up in the morning. It's breakfast time. Let's go. The sheer impossibility of the situation left me rattled, questioning the nature of the events unfolding around me. Now faced with these mounting peculiarities, I find myself torn on how to proceed. I'm determined to maintain my composure and approach the situation with a level head. However, the frequency and intensity of these incidents are becoming increasingly alarming. I seek advice and input from others. What do you all think I should do? Should I confront these inexplicable occurrences head on? Or seek assistance to unravel the enigmatic happenings that seem to unfold with each passing day? Story number 23, Babies Gave Warning. In 2016, I had the incredible opportunity to work as the director of housing at a small college near the bustling city of Chicago. Each day was filled with an array of responsibilities, and my desk was constantly flooded with voicemails from students and concerned parents regarding facility-related issues, inquiries, and the usual assortment of questions. It was a part of my routine to diligently listen and respond to these messages, providing assistance and guidance whenever needed. However, one summer day, a peculiar incident occurred that deviated from the norm. As I sifted through the numerous voicemails, I stumbled upon an unexpected surprise, a butt-dialed message. Intrigued, I pressed play, and my ears were instantly greeted with the sweet, distant melody of a child's voice. Although I couldn't discern the specific words being sung, the sheer innocence and purity in the sound touched my heart. You see, I've always had a soft spot for babies and children, so this unintentional mistake struck me as incredibly precious. As the minute-long call progressed, it became evident that the caller has eventually realized their unintentional act of butt-dialing. Amidst some shuffling and movement, an adult's laughter filled the background, and the caller promptly ended the call. Although this was merely an amusing incident, I couldn't help but feel a sense of warmth in my heart. I decided to save the voicemail, eagerly anticipating the moment when I could share it with my husband, who coincidentally worked alongside me at the same college. However, he was currently away on a military drill weekend, so I eagerly waited for his return to delight in this unexpected treasure. As life continued its relentless march forward, I inadvertently forgot about the saved voicemail amidst the chaos of my responsibilities. Many weeks later, our college began to process the student housing registration for the upcoming academic year, and once again my voicemail inbox overflowed with messages demanding attention. Determining to address every concern, I diligently began working my way through the sea of requests. It was during this arduous task that fate intervened once again, guiding my hand toward the forgotten voicemail. An inexplicable shiver traveled down my spine as the automated attendant announced that the message had been received a staggering eight weeks earlier. The timing couldn't have been more uncanny. For just a week prior, I had discovered that I was approximately eight weeks pregnant. Overflowing with astonishment and excitement, I couldn't contain this extraordinary revelation to myself. I excitedly shared the news with my co-workers, and to my delight, not a single person left my office without experiencing the same goosebump-inducing awe that enveloped me. And then, in a twist of fate that seemed almost predestined, it happened once more. This time it was December and my husband and I had been earnestly discussing the possibility of expanding our family and welcoming another child into our lives. We confided in our closest family and friends, 
informing them that they were unofficially trying for baby number two. Unexpectedly, my mom reached out to me, an inexplicable sense of certainty permeating her words. She disclosed that she had awoken in the middle of the night, absolutely convinced that I was pregnant. It was an overwhelming sensation, a strong intuition that transcended mere thoughts, as if she had a deep knowing. Initially, I brushed off her message, rationalizing it that I had recently experienced my period and had not been particularly active in pursuing conception due to the relentless demands of my stressful job. Yet, as the days turned into weeks, a nagging feeling settled within me. I began to feel different, unlike my usual self. Curiosity and a hint of apprehension led me to take a pregnancy test, hoping to quell the growing uncertainty. The results astounded me. I was indeed pregnant. Overwhelmed by a flurry of emotions, I scheduled an ultrasound to confirm the pregnancy's progress. During that appointment, as the technician deftly moved the wand across my abdomen, measuring the tiny life growing within me, I couldn't help but ponder the uncanny series of events that had led me here. The ultrasound revealed that I was precisely six weeks and six days pregnant. Unable to contain my astonishment, I immediately reached out to my mother, sharing the life-altering news. Moments later, she responded, sending me a screenshot of her previous text, which was dated exactly six weeks and six days prior. As I grappled with this inexplicable chain of events, an overwhelming sense of bewilderment washed over me. What was the meaning behind these occurrences? Was I being touched by some form of communication from beyond the veil? Had others experienced similar signs and messages? These thoughts weighed heavily on my mind, evoking a peculiar and uncomfortable feeling within me. A mix of awe, uncertainty, and an indescribable sense of wonder. As I journeyed through this enigmatic maze of inexplicable occurrences, I couldn't help but contemplate the intricate nature of the universe and the mysterious ways it chooses to communicate with us. Perhaps there are forces beyond our comprehension, orchestrating a symphony of events to guide us along our path. While unsettling, I couldn't deny the profound impact these messages had on my life. Shaping my journey towards motherhood, and instilling a newfound appreciation for the intricate tapestry of existence itself. In the end, I realized that these inexplicable happenings were not meant to unsettle or discomfort me. Instead, they served as reminders of the profound interconnectedness of life, the existence of unseen forces guiding us in ways that we may never fully understand. Embracing these signs with an open heart, I embarked on the remarkable journey ahead, eager to explore the depths of this uncharted territory and cherished every moment of this wondrous and inexplicable miracle called life.